بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم so Allah Khan here and today we we do what you know we solve the assignment the assignment number three so the first uh, two I have already solved uh, and this is the third so let's say we get going assignment three Question number one is on the continuous time Fourier transform. Question number one is on the continuous time Fourier transform. The output of a causal LTI system is related to the input by a differential equation. So we have a causal LTI system and the output input relationship is given as the derivative of y of t. plus 2 times y of t is equal to x of t. In the first case, we are asked to determine the frequency response. We are asked to find the frequency response. So part number A is the frequency response in which I would name it as h of j omega. h of j omega is unknown which is your uh, y of j omega divided by x of j omega so this frequency response is unknown this is the system response right the frequency response and then in part number b if you are given if x of t is exponential of negative a t u of t and a is 1 so exponential of negative t u of t determine y of omega so for this case now determine y of omega that is the Fourier transform of the output and in part number c what do you have find y of t for input in part b for input of part b so this is a simple question so let's do what let's uh, solve it together let's solve it together the first case so part a is the frequency response is unknown and we know very well we know very well the formula the formula is that h of j omega or if i simply write omega this would be equal to summation k running from 0 to m b k j omega to the power k divided by k running from 0 to n a k j omega to the power k this is how you find the frequency response so put the values uh, how do you put them so have a look from the equation have a look from the equation when k is 0 no derivative term we only have a 1 j to the power uh, j omega to the power 0 right and then plus 0 everything is 0 similarly over here have a look the no derivative term a0 is 2 2 with j omega to the power 0 then plus k equal to 1 the first derivative term it's 1 with j omega to the power 1 so have a look I have got my answer that is h of omega is equal to 1 divided by we don't have a second derivative right so the next terms are 0 so 1 and then this would be a 2 plus j omega or j omega plus 2 or whatever it is fine part b this was for part a right now for part b if the input is what if the input is x of t is equal to exponential of negative t u of t now what do you have you need to uh, find the y of j omega so if y of j omega we know this is n of j omega into x of j omega right so we need to find x of j omega also first so which means that x of j omega would be we know this very well x of j omega this would be a 1 upon 1 plus j omega right and now we know very well that y of j omega is equal to x of j omega into h of j omega so we put the values so let's say I only write omega y of omega would be 1 upon 1 plus j omega into 1 upon uh, 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 2 plus j omega isn't it like this no it is it is it is 
yes it is 1 plus j omega and 2 plus j omega it's fine so you have got your corresponding y of j omega you've got your corresponding y of j omega which is like this which is 1 plus j omega into 2 plus j omega fine part number c so y of t is unknown so uh, i would not be doing it i would not be doing the 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 the, the uh, partial fractions so y of t is what so for y of t you need to do what you need to take the inverse of y of j omega and how do you do that so you do that by doing the partial fraction so so if y of t is unknown let me write it so you need to take y of j omega and you need to solve it by partial fraction so a upon 1 plus j omega and then plus b upon 1 minus j omega so you put j omega is equal to you know very well whatever you have to put the values of a is 1 the value of b is minus 1 solving it yourself this implies that y of j omega would give you a 1 over 1 plus j omega and then uh, minus 1 over 1 plus 1 minus j omega i did it wrong this is a 2 plus j omega this is a 2 plus j omega 2 plus j omega so 1 over 1 plus j omega minus 1 over 2 plus j omega and now for this you can take the inverse Fourier transform you know the formula for inverse and what would you do you have uh, exponential of negative t, t u of t for this one you have y of t would be exponential of negative t into u of t for this one and then a minus A minus sign also okay minus sign also no minus sign special minus to u of t for this one and then a, a minus an exponential of minus 2 to u of t for this one so this is your overall question number one this was your question number one simple questions i hope it was uh, clear i'm going a little less speed why because we know this very well question number two question number two is for the discrete time Fourier transform consider a system with impulse response h of n it's given one over two to the power n cause of pi n by two and this is then whole multiplied to unit step signal u of n determine the system transfer function h of omega this is part a h of omega is unknown h of omega and x of uh, h of uh, exponential of j omega is the same thing some books use this notation for what for 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 this thing h of e of j omega fine these are one in the same thing and then uh, we have another uh, part to it as well we uh, if suppose that the input is x of n and this is equal to cos of pi n by 2 i would be writing it at 0.5 pi n later determine the system output so determine the system output y of n using the transfer function h of omega found over here so let's get to this question let's get going in the second question consider the impulse to plus transform let me do it you know simplify it first for myself let me simplify it first for myself i would represent my signal in terms of two signals let's say my h of n is the signal a to the power n u of n a to the power n u of n so where 1 over 2 is my a i would put it later on so the next thing that remains is this one so i have let's say another signal that is h1 of n so this is h of n multiplied by cos of 0.5 pi n cause of 0.5 pi n so uh, now what do I have 
now what do I have? I am asked to find, uh, I need to find the overall, uh, you know, uh, this uh, 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 H1 of exponential of j omega. I need to find the overall uh, Laplace transform, right? Not Laplace, the Fourier transform. So what do I do? I can use the properties. I can use the properties. So if I write it like this, that H of n into cos of 0.5 pi n what would this have the corresponding Laplace transform so I know the Fourier transform for this and overall I could use by the convolution property the overall signal is this so it's multiplication of h of n with cos of something so if this is the multiplication in the time domain so in the frequency domain it would be convolution so we know from the convolution property that now we would have a 1 over 2 pi right and then what do we have we have uh, this thing x of and uh, h of for this i have h of exponential of j omega convolved with what with pi of pi times delta of omega minus 0.5 pi and then a plus delta omega plus 0.5 pi and this is what it is what have i written so if i write it separately then only then you will understand for this the laplace transform we know is h of exponential of j omega is 1 over 1 minus a e of exponential minus j omega right and for cause what do we have so let me write it over here that for cause what was this for cause of omega naught n we have the corresponding Fourier transform as pi times delta of omega minus omega naught plus pi already taken common plus uh, impulse omega plus omega naught so this is what I have written first I use the convolution property right so 1 over 2 pi is from that convolution property right then h of g omega is this thing and this thing is for the uh, for the cause right now what do you do you use the distributive property the distributive property h of g omega first convolved with this thing and then convolved with this thing now you know that something that is convolved within an impulse would give you the impulse back and with, if, it, if it has some shifting so the original signal would be the original transform would be shifted by those units so i would uh, write over here what property i'm going to use I'm going to use is that I have exponential of j omega n with x of n j omega naught n with x of n so this would give you an x of exponential of j omega minus omega naught and this is what I'm going to use over here so have a look have a look what would I have the overall for this I have the overall uh, a, a, h of a of j omega right the overall Fourier transform so this would be a this would be a 1 upon 2 pi so this pi is constant so this would come outside of the integration so I would write it over here outside of the of the of the convolution of course so we would have what an x of this convolved with an impulse would give me an x of exponential of j omega minus 0.5 pi right and then a plus this would give me x of exponential of j omega plus 0.5 pi you know this is this so we would put the values we would put the values so what do i have this implies what that my h of exponential of j omega would come out to be 1 over 2 and this would be a 1 over 1 minus a e of minus j omega minus 0.5 pi and then plus this thing also plus 1 upon 1 minus a e of minus j omega plus 0.5 pi and i hope you have understood it you have understood now you can put the value of a equal to 1 over 2 putting a equal to 1 over 2 so this implies that you've got your h of a of g omega this is 1 over 2 is common 
you have a 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 times exponential of minus j omega minus 0.5 pi plus 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 times exponential of minus j omega plus 0 0.5 pi. This is your answer. This is your answer. Now, now what do we have for part B? For part B, we need to find y of n. So for y of n, what do we need to do? We need to find y of j omega. And y of j omega, how do we get? So we get y of j omega by this formula. x of j omega into h of j omega. And we've already got h of j omega. So we need to find uh, 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 x of j omega. And x of j omega we find with the use of x of n. So first have a look this, uh, this I have written wrong the notations. This is in, uh, well, this is fine. Sorry, sorry. This is the continuous time case. I'm sorry. Anyways, no problem, no problem. Let me remove this half board first. Okay. Now, what was I talking? We need to find what? We need to find y of n using h of exponential of j omega. So we know very well that I have that y of exponential of j omega would be x of exponential of j omega into y of this thing, uh, into h of this thing. So we already have h, we, for x of exponential we have x of n, so we find these two, we find y, and then by taking the inverse we find y of n. So, you are given uh, cause of x of n is what? Cause of 0.5 pi n. So this implies what? that your x of exponential of j omega, omega naught is 0.5 pi. I've already written over here the formula. So x of exponential of j omega would come out to be pi is taken common. You have a delta of omega minus 0.5 pi, then plus delta of omega plus 0 0.5 pi. Isn't it like this? It is. So y of j omega is equal to x of j omega we have, h of j omega we have, putting both the values in, let's say I call this 1. So 1 implies what? Uh, that y of this would come out to be, let me put the values directly from here. I will put the values directly from here and I would solve it directly from here. Fine. So you have a pi by uh, 2. Let me name it a 0.5. Let me name it a 0.5 pi. Then you have uh, exponential of minus j omega minus 0.5. Exponential of minus j omega minus 0.5 pi. Plus exponential of minus j omega plus 0 0.5 pi. And then you have a plus 2. And then what do you have? You have a delta of omega. And then you have a delta of delta of omega plus 0.5 pi. And then plus 2 divided by whole divided by 1 minus 0.5 times a minus b a plus b or something like that exponential of minus j omega minus 0.5 pi into 1 minus 1 over 2 exponential of minus j omega plus 0.5 pi. So what have I done? I have put x of j omega and h of j omega in this equation. 1 over 2, I sometimes write it 1 over 2, sometimes 0.5. Don't get confused in it. y of j omega, y of exponential of j omega comes out to be what? Pi by 2, I would write it like here, pi by 2, right? Then you have a 3 plus exponential of j omega, 3 plus exponential of uh, 
de pi. You, you solve them yourself. I may have some mistakes. I may have some mistakes. Then you have a delta of omega minus pi by 2 divided by 1 minus 1 over 2 into 1 and multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 2 exponential of minus j pi. So they've split it, right? They have split it. Plus pi by 2 exponential of j pi plus 3 again the same thing delta of omega plus now okay so now you have a delta of omega plus 0.2 isn't that fine it is and now you have 1 minus 1 over 2 exponential of j pi positive j pi now right and this thing 1 minus 1 over 2 so you solve them yourself you just do these steps yourself you would understand it now if I just uh, have a look at one thing and then I write it so that would take time so that's why I am just writing it directly solving this now solving this whole thing solving this whole thing would give you what it would give you the final y of j omega this would be 4 by 3 pi Delta of omega minus pi by 2 uh, 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 plus 4 by 3 pi delta of omega plus pi by 2. You have got a cos function, you know very well. 4 by 3 pi, I take constant pi of minus omega minus pi by 2 plus delta of omega. plus pi by 2 isn't it like this it is and we've already seen I've already written it over here but let me you know write it once again that uh, cos of omega naught n has the corresponding Fourier transform as pi times delta of omega minus omega naught plus delta of omega plus omega naught have a look pi we have 4 by 3 is a constant omega naught is pi by 2 here omega naught is pi by 2 so which means you can take the inverse and the inverse implies what the y over, y over t is 4 by 3 is a constant and this goes to cos of cos of pi by 2 n and this is your answer this is your answer this is all about question number Two. Let me remove the whole board and then of course I will drink a glass of water and then we will continue. Okay, what is the next question? The next case question number three. Question number three, and what does it state? Uh, determine the transfer of the time function x of t for the given x of s. So x of s is given, which is equal to s plus one over s squared plus five s plus six. So I could write it as three s plus two s, but wait, wait, wait. Anyways, real of s is less than minus 3 this is what the ROC is given so uh, we are asked to find the inverse of it so so let's find it anyway so have a look so I told you whenever you're given like this you should do what first of all draw the ROC so the ROC is like this it's uh, minus 3 so it's lying to the left of the leftmost pole most probably so which means the, the x of t the time domain function would be what would be a left-sided signal so I could write my x of s as what I could write my x of s as uh, 1 over uh, s plus 1 over uh, s plus 1 over what s plus 2 into s plus 3 right 
s plus 2 into s plus 3 and then I could do it by the partial fraction expansion method which means I could say a further as a a over s plus 2 plus b over s plus 3 and you know how to simplify it yourself you get the value of a as negative 1 and b as 2 so which means that my x of s comes out to be negative 1 upon s plus 2 plus 2 upon s plus 3 this is what my uh, what is this so have a look this is a left side signal so we have an exponential of negative a t uh, u of t u of minus t right so have a look for this for for, for this the, the 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 roc would be what sigma would be less than minus 2 plus 2 minus 2 minus 2 and for this sigma would be less than minus 3 so have a look what do we have we have the uh, exponential of negative a t u of minus t so for this we have 1 over s plus a with the roc sigma to be less than minus of a yes yes so have a look by taking the inverse by taking the inverse what would we have inverse implies what that my y of t or, or x of t is the signal so x of t is equal to negative is from before exponential of negative 2t u of minus t plus 2 is already here exponential of negative 3t u of minus t you could further write it as exponential uh, 2 times exponential of minus 3t minus exponential of minus 2t whole multiply with the u of minus t and this is your time domain function this is the answer is that fine it is the next question the next is question number four consider a continuous time LTI system with input and output y of t are related by differential equation so in question number four we have a differential equation again the second derivative of y of t minus the first derivative of y of t minus two times y of t and this is equal to x of t let x of s and y of s denote the laplace transform of x of t and y of t so we know this very well that x of t would have laplace transform x of s y of t would uh, have the laplace transform y of s right and then h of s denote the laplace transform of the impulse response h of t yes so h of t has laplace transform h of s we know this very well so determine h of s and sketch the pole zero plot so in part number a h of s is unknown pole zero plot is unknown and for part number b what do we have sketch the roc sketch roc for and then you have different cases so case number one is for a stable system case number two is for causal system number three is for neither stable nor causal system so this is a very easy question again so let's get going let's get going question number four we know from the formula we know from the formula h of s is equal to what h of s is equal to summation k running from 0 to m b k s to the power m divided by summation k running from 0 to n a k s to the power n s to the power k s to the power k in both the cases a k for y terms b k for x terms and k the derivative right so anyways have a look so i would write it directly from here which is equal to so uh, x of t only has no derivative term and the coefficient is one so we would have a one over here divided by divided by have a look uh, no derivative term so you have a minus two with s to the power zero is one and then plus then you have a minus one with s to the power one so you have a minus of s and then you have over here plus s squared plus s squared so which means that I could write it like this that h of s is equal to 1 upon s squared minus s uh, minus 2 
Isn't it like this? Let me check. It is, right? And can I not write it as S minus 2 into S plus 1? So I can write it as 1 over S minus 2 into S plus 1. I can yes now what do I have I use the partial fraction again so by using partial fraction anyways this was H of S was required till here H of S was only required so H of T is not required this is my answer okay this is my answer anyways if H of T is required as well so use your partial fraction h of s is equal to a upon s minus 2 plus b upon s plus 1 solving it would give you the values so this would imply that your h of s comes out to be 1 over 3 and minus 1 over 3 so 1 over 3 divided by s minus 2 and then a plus minus 1 over 3 divided by s plus 1 fine Anyway, this is not required. So this implies if you take the inverse, so h of t would come out to be 1 over 3 is like this. And uh, this is, have a look. Let's say, let's say this is a right sided, okay. So what would you have? You have an exponential of negative 2t for this one. And then uh, u of t and then minus 1 over 3. And then you have an exponential of negative t, u of t for this one. This was not required. You can do it yourself anyways. Pull zero plot, pull zero plot. What do we have? So, uh, you know, have a look. We don't have any zero. Zero is what? It's root of the numerator. We don't have any zero. Do, for, uh, for, and for poles, what do we have? So, we have no zero. Right? We have no zeros. Right? And for poles, what do we have? So, we have S minus 2 into S plus 1. So, what would give you? You put it to 0. So, S is equal to 2 and S is equal to minus 1 is your pole. So, have a look. If this is your sigma, this is your J omega, S is equal to 2 and minus 1 is your pole and we don't have any 0. So, this is the pole 0 plot. Now, the ROC, we are not given any additional information. This H of T, I did, but I did wrong. Why did I did wrong? Because I was not given that the system is right sided. I was not given its cause or anything. I just supposed it to be like this. So, my final answer is still there. My final answer is still here, okay. This I supposed it to be a right sided, okay. Let's say, say right sided. Because if, if you don't write it, so then your this could be wrong. Fine. So, anyways, now we have to draw three ROCs. So, so let us draw it. Let us draw it. So, the first would be like this. Let me go in a little speed because the light has to go. So, this is if your sigma axis, this is your j omega axis. One is at 2. The other is at negative 1. Similarly, let's say this is your sigma, this is your j omega, this is at 2, this is at negative 1. And similarly, let's say over here, this is your sigma, this is your j omega, this is at 2, this is at negative 1. So, when it is stable, when it is stable, so it has to include uh, both, it has to include the what? It has to include the the j omega axis right so what do i do i would draw it in between the two poles right i would draw it in between the two poles like this so this would come for your stable system we have seen it already similarly now if you want to make it stable and causal so you could take it from a negative one and till the end but if it's only causal if it's only causal so in that case it would lie to the right of two it would lie like this this would be to the causal system right and similarly if it's neither stable nor causal so the causal system is the right half plane stable has to include the j omega axis so if it's neither stable nor causal so it would be the opposite so it would be like this which means it would be the anti-causal system anti causal system which is neither stable nor causal case number three right similarly similarly oh and the light is gone it's 12 o'clock anyways we are just finished this causal but it's not stable it's unstable similarly this is unstable and it's not causal it's not causal we can have a case we can have a case let's say like this if it's two it's negative one so if if the roc lies like this it could not write like this it could not uh, uh, draw like this 
we could not draw it like this it could not be stable and causal at the same time why because it's including a pole in the roc and the roc could not uh, you know uh, include a pole right so it could not be stable and causal at the same time and this is what i was uh, uh, i was trying to do i was trying to say from this so you know uh, the the rocs uh, if i write the impulse responses for both the cases for a causal system so so this that i have written this is for causal system right for right side it's similarly if it's for a double sided if it's for a double sided so what would you do for negative one you would take the right sided for uh, for two you would take the left sided so in this case your h of t would come out to be one over three negative one over three exponential of negative t u of t and then plus uh, and then you have a minus one over three exponential of negative two t u of minus t so this minus comes from the formula don't we have a minus i think we have okay so you need to uh, check with your formula right you know the formulas very well and for the third you would have uh, for for both you would have left side so anyways you can do the impulse responses by yourself anyways i i, I don't want to write it that is not required you can do it yourself that is it that is it for the videos that is it for the course that is it for today see you in the next lecture with the paper inshallah not very soon uh, i will uh, upload the paper right before the exams the last friday that comes before the exam so the exams are from 26th of july so the last friday that comes before this so that would be a 25 uh, 24 23rd july so 23rd july you will get the video of the final term past paper solved till then take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel Goodbye.